Podcast. I'm here with Bo Billingsley, um, legendary uh, voice actor for a multitude of anime, um, legendary anime, uh, specifically Cowboy Bebop. And I kind of wanted to start there. Uh, Cowboy Bebop, and I would say the modern, the second wave anime in America, is on almost universally in the top five list, um, which means your voice. Uh, has a ha- has been etched into the psyche of a generation, and probably two now, of young people who now are loving love anime. What does that What does that feel like? <laughs> wow, that's that's uh, that's pretty awesome. I, I, I'm more awesome than I thought. You know, uh, it, no, it's um, it's it's an honor to be um, in a show that has had the life that it's had. You no, know, we did the series in '98. Wow, was it that and long ago? 1998, we did the series. Wow. And uh, so we're coming up in a couple of years on our 20, 20th anniversary. But when we were doing it, you know, nobody knew that it was going to become like a, a a cult favorite. And right. um, but it has become that, and it's such an honor to be uh, in, involved with the project which allows me to interact with fans literally all over the world. And it's all about the fans. So um, when people come to me and say that um, Cowboy Bebop helped them get through college, uh, Cowboy, literally one person told us that Cowboy Bebop saved their life. She was in such a depressed state, mm-hmm. and this happened at Anime uh, Expo in L.A. Mm-hmm. about uh, on the 4th of July. Mm. The whole Cowboy Bebop gang was there, which is only the third time we'd be, ever been to a con b- b- together, the whole group. We were on the stage, and people were lining up to ask their questions. And she came up, and she choked up. She mm. could hardly get it out. And then she expressed that, that she literally was thinking about eliminating herself. Mm. And a friend of hers said, you know what? Watch this. And as I say, when she was expressing this story, she was choking up. So we started choking up. Right. And we all, all five of us, you know, the four actors and Mary Elizabeth, who voiced Julia as well as she directed it, we all went down and we surrounded her and, you know, gave her a hug. And my wife was in the audience. She said the room was just like, it was awesome. Everybody had chills and it just went silent. And then, you know, the applause. And, you know, when you... You're in the booth and you're voicing uh, a character and doing a project. You never think that maybe you might have a profound uh, effect on people. Right. And uh, when something like that happens, it's just awesome. That is probably the the most emotional uh, experience I've had um, in my professional career. To right. when, you know, when you see that you have a profound effect on somebody like that. So what is that, if you could find the words to describe, because you, you're a normal person. Right. Right. You're, you're a regular guy, which just happens to all have an awesome voice. Um, and, you know, before before I started researching for this interview, I, I didn't know what you looked like. Oh, I right? see. Mm-hmm. And so, and then suddenly you have a fan tell me, you changed my life. And you kind of, how do you reconcile, like, that you know is is it just the surreal the surreality of that? It it is know? surreal. It is surreal, and because um, I've had over the years, I have people say, I, you know, we help them get through college. Right. Like somebody said that today. Right. You no, know? I, I will be one of those. People. Oh, is that right? Yes. <laughs> so that's awesome, man. That's awesome, and um, but it 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 um, it's indescribable the feeling that you have if you can help somebody. You know, I mean, we're not paramedics right. you know we're not heroes but if we can have a positive influence on somebody's life um 
I remember my father had a saying, which like to me from the South, if I can help somebody as I pass along the way, then my living shall not have been in vain. Mm -hmm. And you don't think about that when you're in a booth, obviously. Right. But and to have that result after doing your work, it's it's like overwhelming. It's like overwhelming the the feeling you get to say, well, I helped. I actually helped people, and it, we right. didn't just entertain. Right. But we actually helped people yeah. in, in their in their lives, and as I say, that's uh, that's you profound. All, you all were you are very much a gateway anime because 1998. So I'm I'm 34, and I remember Dragon Ball on TV. But mm-hmm. like when I was in middle school, mm-hmm. and then by the time I got to high school, Dragon Ball Z was hot. But it's the anime still hadn't become what it is today, and so. You know, this wasn't your, this was your first voice acting, but this your, was this your first anime? And, uh, no, actually, I voiced um, I voiced the lead in a show called Legend of Black Heaven, mm. and he was a musician who, with his music, saved the universe. <laughs> <laughs> that's now that's pretty profound. Yeah, that's pretty profound, <laughs> but, but also re- very real to an extent. Yeah. So, so like, so as a voice actor in this time period, anime is not like this crazy thing that it is today. What are your thoughts in terms of just, was it just kind of work at the time or like, did you have any inkling, you know? It it was, I had no inkling and we were at that time, anime was, it was like under the radar. Yeah. Uh, As a matter of fact, I remember mentioning to someone that I was voicing a character and uh, an anime character and they, they didn't even know what anime was. Right. And uh, I think that was just before Bebop might have been 96, 97. I don't know. I don't remember. Right. But it was at a time when anime wasn't part of our culture. Right. And so people would say, what, what is anime? What is anime? What is anime? Now it's like right. part of our culture is part of Americana. Right. And the beautiful thing about Cowboy Bebop is Mr. Watanabe, his research was so um, detailed mm. That if you if you watch Cowboy Bebop and listen to it, there's so many elements of our culture, right? From the music way back, um, I mean, it's uh, I learned a lot about our culture when I I googled Cowboy Bebop and all because all of the you research that people did, and, right? Yes. Right, and I, and how, as a, as African American. Uh, uh, you remind me of my uncles, and I know they are all about jazz, not yeah. traveled a little bit. Oh yeah. But did you know that was part of the 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 show? No. How did what did that feel like when you like watched the show? You heard your voice, and then all of a sudden there's this crazy freestyle horn riff. I was um, blown away. Right. The music in Cowboy Bebop is awesome, and like Tank, which is right. like our theme song, the opening. Dun, 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 uh, dun, dun, oh yeah. man! It, yeah. it's a, I just went. Um, was it last week? A week before last, uh, a friend of ours. Um, she she has a group, and they they were playing at a club. So we went to support her, mm-hmm. and there's basically singing. Sing, it's a singing group, right? But right. you know, they had musicians. But and then they did Tank, an instrumental. <laughs> and the place went nuts. Right. And it wasn't, they weren't anime fans. But they were just fans of music. And they were like, what is that? They didn't know what that was. Right. And, it, and the horn. And there was a female um, uh, sax player, you know. And of course, there's something about a woman playing a saxophone. Right. And, like, and she was just wailing. And that place was jumping. And, and then it brought me back to the very first day when we were recording on uh, uh, Bebop. And we were trying to figure out what voice I was going to use, you know. Right. And when it's, when they said Cowboy Bebop, I was thinking Cowboys, right? You know. And I didn't realize we were going to be bounty hunters in the future. In so, yeah. and, and I was we were trying to figure out the voice. And Mary Elizabeth, I was thinking, well, maybe I could talk like that, you know. And we gonna, she said, nah, I don't know. She said, well, why don't you use your own voice? I said, well, that would be boring. And she says, no, Bo, just use your own voice. And of course, you know, that proved that she made right. the right decision. Right. You know, that was. Uh, and that was her, I think that was her first directing gig, mm. Mary Elizabeth, and she was awesome. She paid so much attention to the detail and to the dub to make sure we had every flap matched. Right. And um, I think that's one of the reasons it's become a classic, because it's Cause it's pretty flawless. And it's, and, and it's also, like, that's more, that's one of the first animes made with Western words involved, uh, not involved, in mind almost first and then Watanabe has done that consistently with his work. He's like, you know, you guys are cool over here in Japan, but I really want to 
rock with these, you know, these Yankees over here. Yeah. Um, so last quick question, yeah. just about like the, the profession of being a voice actor. Um, and especially since a lot of your work is in anime and, um, and, and cartoons that aren't as Western. Uh, what is the, are there differences in just the experience or is it just, you know, the connection, uh, like just kind of describe that like range. Um, I mean, I'm not sure to understand the question. The, the connection. Like, is there is there a difference between Western work and uh, or anime? With, and anime. Oh, right. In terms yeah, of like, the, as a voice actor. Yeah, yeah. There, there's a difference. And, of course, if, we're doing, uh, if you're doing original animation, mm-hmm. you know, you're all sitting in a room together. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you're playing off each, each other. But, you know, with anime, we're redubbing so that we're in the booth alone. Right. There's nobody in there. And, you know, we have a script there. Um but in every now and then, the the director might read the other person's lines, so you can get a sense of a flow of the, of the conversation. But basically, you're just doing your stuff. It's just mm-hmm. you doing your your stuff. You can read what the other actor asks or says, and then you you respond. But that you don't hear them. Harder. It, in a way, it is. But you know, like anything, you adapt, right. and the more you do it, the better you get at it. And and you rely on your director. Who who's going to keep you on track? Um, and uh, and sometimes when we we'll do we'll do something we'll do a piece, and then we'll have we'll go back. Say let's revisit. We go back and we'll redo the beginning mm-hmm. because sometimes it takes a while for you to get into the flow of what's right. going on. And then so get understanding the character. Right. Yeah. Right. And and then so then what we'll do is go back to the beginning of, of, of the session and say well let's let's. Uh, Revoice uh, some of these beginning lines because it took you a while to get into where you needed to be to get, to get into that space right. uh, to to be that character and because you know we don't think of it as acting I'm trying to be a character right. I'm trying to experience that character and, and it's, there's all these different separations between you and the character's origins because it's the original subject matter and then the dialogue in a different language and it's translated by somebody else and then given to you. Right, several and, times removed, right? right? And right. so you're trying to give it a life, but also you got to match the flaps. Right. <laughs> you know, you have that technical it's aspect. It's, it's, uh, yeah. right. And I've then the writers... some bad dubs. <laughs> yes, that happens. But not, not Kyle. I've, I've been signaled that we have to uh, shut down, but this was, okay. um, this was awesome. Oh, it's my uh, pleasure. I, as I stop, let me say... Thank you.